In the last session, we talked about the importance of properly honoring our babies. In this session, we'll talk about how to use spiritual tools to aid us in the healing process. I'll be providing a lot of different suggestions, so you may want to have pen and paper to take notes throughout the session. Besides practicing good self-care and coping skills, there are also many spiritual tools we can use to help in our healing. I'd like to share my experience with a broken heart after the death of my dog, Tink. After Tink died, I suddenly got a pinched nerve on the left side of my neck that radiated down my arm and all the way to my fingertips. The pain was excruciating and my hand and fingers were numb. I've actually never felt pain like that before in my life. Medication didn't help, so I turned to my holistic healing methods. Over the next few weeks, I did crystal Reiki healing, acupuncture, uh, chiropractic care, and Thai massage. These four separate practitioners told me that the pain was coming from my chest area, my heart. I was basically suffering from a broken heart. My emotional pain had manifested itself physically. Although these treatments helped relieve the intense pain, I still had pain and limited movement in my arm. I knew I needed to heal spiritually in order to treat myself physically. Through my spiritual work, I was able to have a full recovery within about 10 months. And I want to share with you the things that I did to help. First, I did chakra work. With some chakra balancing meditations, I was able to identify that not only my heart chakra was closed, but so was my root and sacral chakras. My root because I lost my safety, my comfort, and my stability. Tink was my reason for waking up in the morning, and now it felt like I no longer had a reason. My sacral chakra was closed because I lost my power, my power of feeling loved, missed, and important. Tink gave me all these things, and her death took this away from me. If you need help identifying closed chakras, you can do this when you're allowing yourself to feel your emotions and asking yourself where you feel that pain in the body, similar to the guided meditation that we did in the previous session. Another way is to do a chakra balancing meditation. If you're usually able to see the chakra colors fairly easily, I've found that when I have a closed chakra, it's much harder for me to see that particular color. Another way is to identify what's causing your pain and identify which chakra that pain could correlate to. As an example, In session three on depression, if you were able to feel your emotions anywhere physically in the body, take note if that area corresponds with any chakras. This could be a chakra that is blocked. Once you've identified which chakras to work on, start to do meditations. It could be guided or silent that focus on those specific chakras. See the colors in your mind's eye. Imagine each color flowing through and around you. Envision the color healing your pain. Listen to music associated with those chakras. I fell asleep to these music tracks almost every night. Listen to guided meditations that focus on opening those chakras. You can also wear these colors or have something with these colors where you can see them in your bedroom or office, kitchen, wherever you tend to be the most. 
I also used crystals. I find that crystals that help bring you what you need. For me, I used rose quartz to bring me healing and love and amethyst to bring me calmness and peace and to help me quiet my mind enough to receive messages from my angels and the universe. I recommend sleeping with the crystals under your pillow at night or carrying them with you during the day. You can carry them in your pocket or maybe even your bra. Meditating with them or wearing them as bracelets or rings or a necklace can help. And recharge your crystals often. You can do this by leaving them outside in the sunlight or moonlight or by placing them on a selenite crystal. I have a bowl, a selenite bowl I place my crystals and jewelry in after I use them. About once a week or whenever your pain becomes worse, it may be time for a cleansing or smudging. Take a bath with Epsom salt or Himalayan or sea salt, and you can add essential oils used for getting rid of negative energy like sage and cedarwood sandalwood or palo santo or you can use calming relaxing oils like lavender or eucalyptus a protective crystal like black tourmaline can be used in the same way you use the other crystals but you can use it for protection of from negative energy You can cleanse your environment with sage or palo santo by going around and allowing the smoke to fill each corner of the room. You can light candles or incense with these same scents, the sage, palo santo, cedarwood, sandalwood. Spray yourself with a cleansing or a smudging spray daily. I usually spray myself in the morning and in the evening and definitely when I come back home from being out somewhere because we pick up a lot of energy from other people. Do things that help raise your energy vibration like listen to music or movement. Movement is so important like dance, stretch, or do yoga, or any form of exercise, or go for a walk, be outside, be around animals. All of these things help raise our energetic vibration. I also recommend cutting cords. Aka cords are like invisible cords that attach to us that are directly connected to other people people we come into contact with or people we think about or when people think about us. These cords can drain our energy, so it's good to cut them daily or as often as you feel is necessary. As a therapist, I do this daily, and this can be done quickly and easily. Just imagine all the cords attached to you, pulling your energy in all directions. Envision cutting these cords with anything you want, scissors, your hand, a knife. Then feel the release of these cords and the relief and the freedom of not being pulled anymore in other directions from other people. If there's anyone in particular pulling your energy, you can imagine them, their face, leaving you and just disappearing peacefully into the universe. I also ask my angels to help me cut all cords and to release all energy that does not belong to me. Then I envision all of those energy molecules leaving my body. I promise you that there is an actual change that I feel in my brain chemistry every time I do this. And finally, ask for protection and envision yourself protected by a shield of some sort or a bubble. I use the statement, please, Lord, protect me in the white light of your love. 
but you can use any statement you'd like to ask for protection. I have two recorded meditations to help with this as well. One is a morning meditation to ask for protection and the other is a nighttime meditation to cut cords and release negative energy. One of the most important things to remember when using any spiritual guidance is to clear your mind first, ground yourself, and fill your heart and soul with positivity and set your intention beforehand. Whatever mindset you're in while doing these things will set the intention of it. So if you're angry, it will instill anger. Sadness will instill more sadness. Light will instill light. And love will bring more love. In addition to all these practices, I also used this time to grow and strengthen my spiritual beliefs. I listened to audio spiritual books, increased my meditation practice, I took classes at a local Buddhist temple, and I really committed myself to practicing these concepts that I was learning. My emotions were up and down for about the first six months. I had days of being positive and feeling that my heart was full. And other days I felt so empty and numb or in so much pain. I wanted to scream sometimes, but it eventually got better. I made it my personal mission to learn the divine practice of letting go. Realizing that nothing is mine and that I have nothing to lose. In my 10th month of grieving, I began to feel the freedom in letting go. And then in that same month, I got a call from a friend who owns a local animal rescue. And she tells me there's a cocker spaniel that was just brought into the animal shelter and scheduled to be euthanized in five days because of her aggressive behavior. I met my friend at the shelter the next morning to adopt her, and the dog was so bad they wouldn't allow her to be released to an individual person like me, so my friend from the rescue had to get her out. This poor girl was in such bad shape, but as soon as we saw each other, her eyes softened. I brought her home and slowly cleaned her up, she was still a bit scared and skittish and would nip if she didn't expect your touch, but I could tell she wanted to be touched and loved. By the end of the first night, she was cuddled up to me and giving me kisses in the first night. That is the power of love. And I know that Tink, my Cocker Spaniel who passed, sent her to me but I needed to let her go first. Crazy enough, about a week after that, I noticed that I no longer had pain at all in my left arm because my heart was healed. This is the end of session nine.